Good morning, Woodhaven Free Baptist Church. What a joy it is to be able to come together in this small number and lift our voice, sing praises unto thee. And we love you, church, and we miss you. And we look forward to the day when we can all be together, here together in the house of God. And I'm sure there are those who are hungry to fellowship with the brothers and sisters in Christ. And we certainly pray for you. And let us all remember this, that God's still on the throne. He still hears and answers prayer. He walks with us. He leads us. And I thank him for his presence that we can feel in our life from day to day. Let us have prayer, and then we're going to have the singing. Heavenly Father, what a joy it is together here this morning, lifting our voice, sing praises unto thee. We thank you for your love and for your mercy and for your goodness to us. And, Father, how we pray for our families out there and those who may be looking in. God, would you bless them and lead us and guide us. And we pray for those who are in authority. God, guide them and help them. We truly need the wisdom of Solomon in this hour in which we're living in. And we thank you, God, for what you have done for us and for your mercy. May the songs be uplifting. May the word of God be food for their soul. Bless Jonathan as he comes to share with us. Now we pray for the sick and the shut-in. God, would you be near to them. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's all sing together and rejoice. For the Lord, he is worthy to be praised. So let me tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me. I'm a Savior, a lost sinner, and my soul has been set free. He has given many
you can indeed say that. I tell you what, let's uh, let's sing this one here. I hope this will be familiar and be a be blessing to you. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It made my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Praise the Lord. We're just going to sing a little bit. I hope that you're able to worship right where you are. Just to worship simply means this. We simply fix our thoughts on the Lord. We consider his goodness. We think of his blessings. We think of how good he's been to us. That's what it means to worship. It means to exclude every other distraction. Every other quarantine issue, every other lockdown mechanism, and we say, Lord, aside from all the rest of the world, you are worthy of my thoughts. You are worthy of my emotional energy. I want to commit my mind and my heart and my soul to you today. That's what it is to worship. It's just simply to say, Lord, I'm here. 
to commit myself to you. Let's continue to sing. This song says we were born to sing about the goodness of the Lord. Well, I was born to sing his praises. I was born to testify when I'm singing about my Jesus. Oh, that's where I feel alive. I can't help myself. I got to tell it. I can't keep it locked up inside. I was born to sing his praises. I was born to when I met the Lord, I found my reason. Happiness and joy replaced my shame. Now I know I've been saved for His glory. And I'm giving all the glory to His name. I was born to sing His praises. I was born to testify. I'm singing about my Jesus. Well, oh, that's when I feel alive. I can't help myself. I got to tell it. I can't keep it locked up inside. I was born to sing his praises. I was born to testify. Seems like all I do is talk about Jesus. Yes, some folks think I'm a little bit carried away. But I've been given a voice and I'm gonna use it to praise the one who took my sin away. I was born to sing his praises. Amen. I was born to testify when I'm singing about my Jesus, oh, that's where I feel alive. I can't help myself, I got to tell it. I can't keep it locked up inside. I was born to sing His praises. I was born to testify. I was born. I was born to testify. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask Brother Phil to come and sing a wonderful song called How Can You Refuse Him Now? How Can You Refuse Him Now? There's a story of love that's often been told of how a Savior died. As they nailed his hands, he cried, they don't understand. As the How can you refuse him now? How can you refuse him now? How can you turn away from his side? With tears in his eyes on the cross where he died, how can you Jesus now As he hung there on the tree He prayed for you He prayed for me There was no one His pain to ease Before he died Yes He prayed Now, 
out church Having God been exceedingly faithful, exceedingly faithful. I'm going to read to you from the word of the Lord this morning in Galatians chapter 5. Before we do that, I'm going to ask the pastor to come and to lead us in prayer as we study God's word together. Our Heavenly Father. We're thankful for the songs that have been sung here this morning. And now we come to hearing the word of God. We thank you for that precious book that gives guidance to all of us 
and we have such confidence that we stand upon it and proclaim it to the whole world. So may you bless Jonathan as he stands today, and may it be food for our souls. And those who are here today, if there's one here, uh, one there uh, before us that does not know you, would you break into their lives, open their eyes, help them to see the need of trusting you. All of this I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> If you have your Bibles today, would you turn with me to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. And I want to read to you about something that I'm sure we're all experiencing a great deal of. And it's about uh, being out of sync <laughs> because our lives have been so disrupted. Did you know that it is easy to forsake our Christian walk when we are interrupted by an interruption in our lives? But can I tell you today that it is very likely that this is not just a hiccup or a speed bump, that this is indeed a divine interruption in our lives. Today I want to read to you from the words of the Apostle Paul, Galatians chapter 5, and if I were to put a title to it, I would say, how to keep in step when you feel so out of sync, how to keep in step with the Lord. When life is so out of sync. Our scripture today, Galatians chapter 5, is a Mount Everest of text for the Christian believer. And we'll begin our reading in verse 13. And if you don't have your Bibles there, I want to share it with you here. The Bible says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty... For an occasion to the flesh, but love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, and here he gives a list, these are the works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying and murder and drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, they which do such things shall not inherit kingdom of heaven. But the fruit of the Spirit, now here's the fruit of the Spirit, here's the contrast, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. They that are Christ have crucified the flesh, which after um, which the affections and lusts. Verse 25 says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Now, I want to just share this passage in three simple points today. I want you to be able to think on this. If you have a pen, paper, I want you to write these things down because I want us to read the Word, not just read it, but I want us to absorb it. I want us to model our lives after it. I want us today to become in sync with the Lord, to walk in step with our Savior. He is so patient. He is so kind. And just because we've been interrupted does not mean that we ought not to pursue the Lord even more in these days. 
Let's pray together. Father, I ask that you'd bless us this morning and that you would teach us your way, teach us your word. Remind us, Lord, of your patience and of your kindness, of your gentleness to walk with us, to bear with us, to grow good fruit in us. Father, I pray your blessing on the message today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, that the Spirit of God would come and be among us. I've prepared. The musicians have prepared. The singers have prepared. Even the one who stands behind the camera has come prepared. The one who stands over here to show us the scripture and the song lyric has been preparing. Brother Daniel up there in the the camera room and Brother Kevin there in the sound room. We've been preparing and we've come. But the only thing that matters is that Christ comes and be among us. It's the only thing that matters is that we invite Christ into our living rooms, into our dining rooms as you view the message, as you worship today in your homes. Hear ye the word of the Lord and be blessed. The first of three parts of this passage, would you notice there is a conflict? Do you notice the conflict in your life? Do you notice how that you want to do right? I know you do, and yet we continue to do wrong. Do you see it in your own life? Do you feel torn? Let me just tell you, there is a conflict. There is the flesh, there is the spirit, and the Bible says they are at war with one another. Verse 16 says this, this I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. There's a battle going on in you. So you have been displaced. You have amended your sleeping habits. Some of you are sleeping in later and going to bed later, and you've amended your eating habits. And uh, let's be honest, it's not been for the better. Our daily habits have been altered, and there's been an eruption, and we have been displaced, and we have been discomforted. And it is natural in these days to seek comfort, to seek what feels good. You have a flesh within you, and I do in me, that longs to feel good. But we cannot become slaves to our feelings. We must do what we know is right, even when we don't feel like it. That's what Paul is saying here. Paul would say in another piece of Scripture, he would say, the thing that I do want to do, I don't do. And the thing that I don't want to do, that's the thing that I end up doing. And, oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me from this body of death? Well, he, I'm going to read that to you in a minute. He, he gives an answer. He said, but thanks be to God. He gave us Jesus. That even in our failings, He has provided a way that we can still be in sync with Him and walk with Him. I know this is a stressful time for you. It is for me. It's for all of us. But we know that giving ourselves to haagen will only reap a negative result. We know this. We feel like doing it, but we cannot give ourselves to that too much. Do you know that to be the truth? Do you feel the conflict? Do you feel the pull to other kinds of sin? To other kinds of vice? Do you believe that what Paul here is saying is true? Did you know that you have an external enemy? We live in this world. The world is not our friend. It is not our helper. The world... um, tries to trip us up. The world, I guess, would be the one that I am referring to, is the world of ice cream. It is the world of, uh, of comforting pleasures that are not honoring to the Lord. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. We live in a world that is warring against our spirit. 
I know that you feel it as I feel it as well. In this same chapter in Galatians 5 and verse 7, Paul says this to the church. He said, you did run well. You were running well. You were doing the right kind of thing. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? He says, what happened that you did love God, that you were serving God? Well, the answer is this to Paul, and he knew the answer. The answer is this. These people were living in the world. They were tempted by the things of the world. They have an enemy, an external enemy in the world. And so this is why we struggle, because we live in this fallen world. Not only do you have an external enemy in this conflict, but you also have an infernal enemy in this conflict. You have an enemy. His name is the evil one. I'm not even dignified by calling him another name today, but he is after you and he's after me. And he would like to use this time to drag you down and not to build you up. He would like to add another addiction into your life. He would like to uh, cause you to fall into various types of sin that will be followed by various types of shame, self-hatred. You have an enemy. 1 Peter 5, 8 says that he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is actively today, this Sunday, right now, after you. Just know this. The conflict you feel is being fueled by your infernal enemy and while you live in an external territory of the enemy in this world and with the evil one. And you also not only have an external and an infernal, but you have an internal enemy. Would you look there in verse 17 again? Let me tell you this. That our fight comes from within, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. We are fallen people, and God has done a great work in our lives. In fact, I have seen it in you. I see the fruit of God in you. I see the goodness of God in you. It is not you that live, but it is Christ that lives within you, and I rejoice as I see this. But the old man is still there. That old woman is still there. Son of God, daughter of God, you are the righteousness of Christ himself. And yet living within you is the old sinful nature that you war against. Here's what I would tell you today. War! Don't give up, but fight. You will be this way until you die. Do you think that Lloyd Locklear does not struggle against sin? Do you think that that righteous man, that godly pastor that we love and cherish, do you think that he does not be at war within himself? He absolutely does. I absolutely do too. It is our job to realize there is a conflict. That's why we are out of sync. That's why we're out of step. The reason I bring this message to you today is to help us understand why things are the way they are so that we can amend our ways and walk in step with the Lord. So we've seen, and it's easy to see here in the scriptures, about the conflict that we are in. I want to just talk to you for a second about the contrast in our lives between wanting to do right and not being able to. Or wanting to do right and not doing it as much as we would like to. Would you look in your Bibles with me at verse 19? Here Paul lays it out so well. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery and fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envying, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. He's saying the list could go on. I tell you as I have told you in times past that they which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now he's going to give another list, a contrary list. Here he says that these are the fruits of the Spirit, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. 
Do you see the difference, the contrast between the two? I want to tell you something. They are both natural. It's just that the things that are natural for you and me, we are natural in the first list, the bad list. These things are natural because we are fallen people. We are born in sin. We, like David, can say, I was conceived in sin, and in sin did my mother bring me forth. That's truth, and we live in these bodies of sin. But can I tell you another really good piece of really good news? As we walk with God, the fruits of the Spirit, they're natural as well. It's just that they're not natural to us. They are naturally planted by God. And as we walk with the Lord and read our Bibles and make time to pray and pour our hearts out to God and we make a list of the things that we are thankful for and we think not only on ourselves but we begin to think on other people and we begin to pray for other people and we begin to not only heap to ourselves but give to one another. These are fruits that naturally grow in our lives when we walk with God. There is a contrast. I've heard it said that inside every man who walks with God is a black dog and a white dog. And the black dog representing the sinful, fallen nature of that man. The white dog representing the new nature that God has brought through salvation. And it is our choice whether we will feed the white one or feed the black one. Because the one that we feed will grow big and strong and dominant in our lives. What will we do today? Will we break open our Bible and feed the good dog, the white dog, and say, we will feed this dog that the fruits of the Spirit might grow? Or will we give in to the sinful pleasures that we are naturally bent toward? Because that dog will grow as well. The Bible would say that what we must do is mortify, therefore, the deeds of the flesh. Paul would go far beyond this. If I were to have Paul come here this morning, Paul would say, no, no, John, you're not, you, you've missed the mark here. You've not preached it correctly. Not only must we nurture the fruits of the Spirit, not only must we feed the good dog, we must take the other dog out into the street and put two bullets into that dog's head. We must murder that dog on a daily basis. Do you know that to be the truth in your life? Do you know the contrast in our lives? We cannot continue to feed this dog and this dog. We must commit ourselves to walking with God even in times of disruption. Even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't feel the motivation to do it, we must exercise or we will become infirmed. And I mean that physically as well as spiritually. We must do the things that we do not feel like doing, but we know that we must do. And when we walk with God, the fruits of the Spirit, they will grow. They will grow. Let me read to you in Romans 7. The Bible says this in Romans 7, in verse 17. Now then, if this isn't encouraging to you, I don't know what is. Look at verse 17. Now when it is, is no more I that do it, he's talking about sin, but sin that, that dwelleth in me. I've never really focused much on that verse before, but that is encouraging to me. Paul says, I want to do right, and I don't do right, and I'm trying to do right. He says, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Is that the same for you? Do you belong to God, and yet you still sin? My friends, <laughs> be couraged, be comforted. It is not that you don't have salvation. It is not that God's not forgiven you of your sin. It's that sin lives within you. It's that we've not done a very good job of putting it to death. Now we are in the process. We are day by day, little by little, mortifying the deeds of the flesh. But Paul said, now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. It sounds like another verse where Paul said, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Now in that verse, he's talking about good deeds recommendable things, commendable things. 
Christ is no longer I. It's not, it's not me. It's Christ that lives. Here, Paul gives a word of encouragement to the drowning believer. He said, it is no longer us, but it is sin. Remember, it is not that you have lost your salvation. It's that you're wrestling with sin, which you should be doing. Let's look in verse 18 of Romans 7. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. He's struggling here. He's wrestling. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There he says in verse 20, what he just said in verse 17, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. That's the truth for all of us. For I delight in the law of God. After the inward man, he says, I love the law of God. I love God's word. But I see another law, verse 23, in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. That's what it does to the law of sin, which is in my members. Here he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? Jessica, go to the next verse, verse 25. I thank God. Here's what Paul says in this contrast. I'm trying to do right, and I can't do right. I want the good fruit, but here I just have the bad fruit. What can I do? Who will deliver me from the body of death? Here's what the great apostle Paul says. I thank God that through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Though I sin, I want to stand and give praise to Jesus Christ. What has Christ done? He has caused us to be dead to our sins, and we can live unto righteousness. My friends, let me tell you, in this time of quarantine, when he sees you, he doesn't see you the way that you really are. He does not see you, but he sees you covered in the blood of his son. He sees you as there is an obvious contrast, and there's an obvious conflict. Jesus Christ has provided a way for us to have a great conquest, a great victory over our sinful nature. Would you look back with me in Galatians 5 and let's look in verse 24. The Bible says, and they which are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the afflictions of the lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Here, the Bible speaks of the mental application to our faith. Do you know that God is good? Do you know that He is for you? Do you know that He is mighty? Do you know that on the cross He paid for your sin? And that because of what He did on the cross, there is no more wrath reserved in the heavens for you. Do you know that when he rose from the grave, the Father looked on him with great pleasure because he had done what was necessary for you to be righteous? My friends, because you sin does not mean you are unsaved. Now to sin and to feel nothing, to sin and to enjoy it and to, and to look forward to it again, you might not be saved. Oh, but if you struggle, if you labor like the Apostle Paul, I love the Word of God, but I don't do what's in the Word of God. And I want to do what's in the Word of God. It's only because of Christ we can have hope. It is only because of Christ that we can have any victory at all. And in this life, we can have some victory. Here he says in verse 24, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh after the affections of of the lust. It means that in our minds, mentally, we have considered ourselves dead to sin. We have considered ourselves belonging to Christ. And therefore, it is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives within me. And even when I fail, I trust the Lord for his righteousness. And I go to him in repentance and I ask his forgiveness. Not only mentally, but also practically. We must curb our sinful 
behaviors. Let me tell you this, church. Let me tell it to you this way, as I've told it to you before. I am not sinless. I know that comes as no shock to any of you. But I can tell you this. As I read God's word and as I walk with God, I sin less. Do you know that to be the truth in your life as well? I, I sin, church, I do, I sin. It is part of my, my sinful flesh. But I'm telling you this, I can't stand it and I hate it. I hate it and the Lord calls me back to righteousness in his good and kind and gentle way. Oh, my friends, it could be like that for you too. In my mind, I belong to God. I have considered myself dead to sin. I do not belong to that slavery anymore, but I am a slave to Christ. I have not the option to just go and live my life as I ought, for I have been bought with a price. I belong to Him. He has paid for me. Therefore, those that He sets free shall be free indeed. You're looking at a free man right here. My friends, you can be free too. Could I invite you today right where you are to confess your sins to the Lord? Could you pray like the Apostle Paul, Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched woman that I've become. Oh, Lord, would you forgive me. Oh, but thanks be to Jesus who brings us the victory. Oh, my friends. I love him for what he has done for me. I am so thankful for what he has done for me. Yes, there's a great conflict. Yes, there is. There is. Oh, but there's been a great conquest, and Jesus has won the victory. I see it in my life. I see the fruits of the Spirit that show me that I belong to him. You know, it's just, it'll be so strange. My little boy will be born just here in this next month. Uh, I am so looking forward to seeing him, and we are praying toward that. You know what I'm looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to seeing what he looks like. I want to lay my eyes on him. Do you know why I care what he looks like? Because he's mine. He's going to look like me in some way. There will be resemblances of me in him. Did you know when we walk with God, we begin to look like him? There will be a family resemblance. We will begin to look like our heavenly father. Could I ask you this morning, as you confess your sin, would you ask the Lord, Lord, make me look more like you. Make me look more like you. And grow the fruits of the Spirit in me. And do that which I cannot. Did you know that he's faithful to do that? He's faithful. And he'll meet you right now, right where you are. If you'll just say, Lord, hear me. He'll hear you. Lord, forgive me. He'll forgive you. Father, make me what I am not. He'll do that work in you. He'll make you look like Him. Would you call out to Him today? As we sing. As we sing. Brother Phil, you lead us. Amazing grace, how sweet. with me.
Amen. Church, I want to tell you, I love you. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you more than I miss Mexican food. I'm telling you, I miss you like uh, my grandma's fried chicken leg. I'm telling you, I miss you like that. I miss you at a level that I didn't know I could miss you. But let me tell you this. Um, some restrictions have been lifted. There's some light at the end of the tunnel. We don't have an exact date in mind, um, but we have tentative dates when we will be able to come and be together again. What we will probably do is we'll ask you to sign up. We'll ask you to sign up, and we're going to invite about 50 people at a time to come back to church and distance ourselves. We've got a marvelous, great, wide sanctuary. We've got plenty of safety here. And so when we announce that, we want you to sign up. And what we'll do is we'll have multiple services on a Sunday. We might have three on a Sunday. We might even have one on a Saturday evening. But I hope that, that will be good to you and you will be looking forward to coming back. And come, and you can come and sit with your family since you've been quarantined with them, and, and we'll just spread out and we'll just worship. Won't it be good to worship together in the house of the Lord again? That day is in sight. We don't have a day exactly in mind, but that day is in sight. And I just tell you that to because I want to encourage you. I want to be optimistic here. I want to, to tell you that we will come back together again, and I am looking forward to that. I am looking forward to that. Pastor, do you want to say anything before we go? It's been a joy to worship with you. Thank God for the message. And if there's an unsaved person out there God spoke to today, mm -hmm. please don't let the sun go down till you get on your knees and have a talk with him. He's reaching out with love and arms. He wants to be your Savior. Church, we love you and thank you for your faithfulness and support, supporting caring about the financial affairs of the church. We love you for that. We bless you. Father, thank you for the wonderful service. Go with us. Keep us, Lord. Meet all the needs in our life. We're looking to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless your church. We love you. We love you. Amen.